You know, in the world of home theater and home audio and things like that, there's a term that gets thrown around. It's called end game. And in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, what I feel the meaning of end game in home theater means and talk about a pair of end game items that I just recently purchased. So stay tuned. Well, thank you for clicking on the video. Uh, as you could probably tell by the thumbnail to the video and my little intro I did, I'm gonna talk about end game items and end game level stuff in the home theater um, and talk about my kind of opinion on it, but also about a pair of end game items I just recently picked up, uh, which not to leave people hanging, but I'll discuss it a little bit more here in a few minutes, but, uh, you can probably tell behind me if you look back here, uh, and you can probably tell from the thumbnail, I picked up a pair of JBL Pro uh, cinema speakers. They're the uh, JBL 8340As um, that are hanging, like I said, up here on my back wall. And I'll get to those in a little bit, but those to me are an end game uh, item here in my home theater. But to start, I just want to briefly talk about, you know, what is an end game item or an end game home theater? And that term gets thrown around in home theater uh, quite a bit. I know it gets used in other kind of hobbies and different things, but my opinion on it and what most people think of, I think, with uh, end game home theater items, and this can vary person to person, so I'm not trying to speak for everybody or say I'm an expert on it, but what it generally is uh, from videos and other forums I've seen, it's kind of like the top of the line, the best item you could get. You know, it's the very end of the line in terms of what you could get in your home theater. You can't really do anything past that. And for most people, again, I'm not speaking for everyone, but for most people, I think it kind of comes down to, oh, this is the, the biggest, the best, the most expensive item I could get of any particular thing, whether it's speakers, a subwoofer, a projector, a projector screen, a, you know, AVR, a Blu-ray player, a 4K player, seating, you know, whatever. Uh, where for me, I don't really look at it as, oh, it's got to be the biggest, best item, most expensive item for my home theater. For me, it's more something that I just really want, that I've had a fascination with, um, you know, for a long time and was really something that I wanted in my home theater. And it doesn't have to be, like I said, the most expensive item uh, for me to feel that that's the end game speaker or that's the end game projector or whatever for me. So I have a couple of those, not too many, because I'm not too picky on this kind of stuff. I enjoy experimenting with different speakers and projectors and whatever, Blu-ray players, you know, and just seeing what's out there. But for me, one of the main things that I felt uh, was an end game item for my home theater and something that I've been really uh, fascinated with and enamored with for a long time, for years, have been the JBL Pro series surround speakers, uh, which, like I said, these are the 8340s that are on my wall back here. Uh, but there's a few other generations of those. There's the 8320s. Uh, 8330s, the 8340s, which are back there, and I think more recently like an 8350 speaker. And I've been fascinated with those for a long time. And it stems from a couple different things. It, it stems from growing up during the 90s, these type of speakers were the predominant speakers in most of the movie theaters I went into in the Midwestern area, the, you know, Illinois, you know, from Chicago throughout it, central Illinois down to the St. Louis like marketplace. So growing up, these were the type of speakers I saw in most uh, theaters that I was in, especially the local theaters growing up in Chicago had some version of these speakers. Um, so I was always enamored with them from that kind of time in my life. And that's really what I thought was 
Oh, that's a surround sound speaker for theater because these are actual theater quality, cinema quality uh, speakers. So I had that growing up. And then when I got into more of the actual home theater stuff when I bought my house and actually started doing this, uh, several years back, I came across a channel called Andy Summers, THX Home Theater and His Cats, um, which is another channel here on YouTube, and I'll, I'll link his channel in the description. Uh, he is a former cinema projectionist. He lives over in England. He used to work in actual movie theaters and cinemas over there uh, as his profession. And he came to acquire throughout his years of work, uh, building a home theater with actual cinema equipment. So not only these type of speakers, uh, but the big freestanding JBL uh, front speakers. Um, he has actual like Dolby processors and actual stuff you would find in uh, a movie theater, especially during the 90s and early to mid 2000s. And that's what he uses in his home theater. It's a pretty neat channel. Like I said, I'll link it. It's it's interesting to watch, you know, and listen to his opinions on stuff. But his channel was the first thing that kind of introduced me to the fact that I could get a pair of speakers like these and put them in my home theater, that I didn't need actual you know, cinema theater level quality equipment to run them. Now, Andy, like I said in his channel, he has all of that as well as some regular processors, but he uses a lot of like high end equipment that he's gotten secondhand. But in order to run these speakers, because they're such high sensitivity, you don't really need that level of equipment. You can use just a standard AV processor, uh, like I have my Rotel to power them. Or you could get separates, you know, you could get a preamp and just a regular standalone amplifier to, to power them. They don't need an extremely high end level of equipment to to be run. And I discovered that through his channel and then through finding other AVS uh, forum posts and just other things. And so I had been on the lookout for some fashion of these speakers for several years since I started really doing this home theater thing. And I had watched a bunch of listings and I would watch things on eBay. I would watch things on Mercari, on Facebook Marketplace. And I would see listings on there, but eventually I, I would never actually buy them because they would run out of my price range. Uh, which also leads here in a little bit to when I talk about how I got these. But they would end up being too expensive for my taste. Because as I say in some of my other videos and kind of the main point of my channel when I talk about my home theater equipment is I buy everything used. I buy everything predominantly secondhand outside of maybe like you know, some DVDs or Blu-rays or 4K discs or something. I might buy those new if they're on a really good sale somewhere. But all the equipment, everything else that's in here, the speakers, projectors, whatever, everything's secondhand. So I kind of have a limit of what I'm willing to spend. And so I don't want to go over that. And I would see these speakers, whether it's the 40s, the 30s, the 20s, the 50s, whatever model, going for around $180 to $100 a speaker. And then you would have shipping on top of that. And then if you found a pair, you'd be looking like, 175 to 200 dollars for a pair of them plus the shipping on top of that very rarely would you find a single speaker let alone a pair of speakers for less than a hundred dollars with shipping and taxes all included and so i would see on all these different sites these listings over the years but i never pulled the trigger because i didn't feel confident in paying that kind of money for those speakers especially when the previous ones that were in here, those Polk FXI A4 speakers, I only paid like 50 bucks for the pair of those when I bought them on Facebook Marketplace, you know, like four years ago or whatever it was. So that brings me to how I found these. So I had watched a bunch of listings, like I said, online on eBay and Facebook Marketplace and whatever. And I found a listing for these speakers, uh, these 8340A uh, JBL speakers. And there was a guy, he's out of St. Louis. He had them listed for quite a while. And originally the listing was for $150 for the pair. And I had steadily watched the price decline over probably the course of six months to a year 
Uh, I had it saved in my favorites on Facebook. And eventually they got down to where they were at $70 for the pair. And I messaged him and asked, you know, are these still available? Uh, Because sometimes, you know, listings don't get updated when they're sold. And he said, oh, yeah, they're still available. They work. He had a video of them playing, you know, so I could see that they were working. He had pictures of everything. So I talked to him and he ended up, you know, selling them to me for the $70 for the pair for both of them. And he drove and brought them to me. So I didn't have to actually drive down to St. Louis like an hour away to go and pick them up. So I didn't even have the gas, you know, fuel costs of the fuel in my car to go and get them. He brought them to me and I I met him at a public place here in town. He brought them. I picked them up for $70 and they're great. I, uh, like I said, these are end game speakers for me. Um, They're high sensitivity. They're extremely detailed for what they are. Um, When I first looked at these speakers, I thought, eh, maybe these wouldn't be as good because these are only a two-way design where a lot of people that are into these type of speakers covet more the 8330s, which are a three-way design speaker. So they have a woofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter. But, uh, you know, these are just as good to me, and for the price, I couldn't pass it up. And I did think initially... I would have a problem mounting these because they're way bigger than what I thought. I had looked at the spec sheet online and saw the dimensions, but in my mind, until I physically saw them in person, didn't realize how big they were. And uh, I thought I'd have an issue mounting them. But since these are the A version of the speakers, they're made with a plastic exterior instead of like a hardwood exterior. So the initial versions of these were these hardwood exterior uh, cabinets and they were heavy they were like at least 40 50 pounds a piece maybe more uh, for a single speaker and you had to buy a special mount uh, bracket like that was complete metal whatever and bolt that into your wall to get it to hang the speaker and i was concerned on my walls down here that even with some heavy duty wall anchors, if I couldn't get them perfectly put into a stud, that they would just rip out of the wall because they were so heavy. And so I was kind of shied away from those wooden cabinet ones into these because these are only like, I think 13 pounds, something in that range, which are a little bit heavier, but about the same weight as the Polk speakers I had. So I knew I could mount these with standard brackets and not, uh, really worry, you know, with it. Uh, but these also come, you can buy an actual professional JBL mount like bracket that would sit in there to mount them. Those go for a piece. Sometimes you can find a pair of them, but same like the speakers, they're like 75 bucks for one mount. So that would have been like $150, $60 for a pair of those mounts. That would have been double what I paid for the speakers. So I didn't really want to buy those. So I ended up just using some leftover wood and screws and some like keyhole mounts that I had lying around. And I just fashioned my own bracket to put on the back of these and just put them into the threaded uh, slots that are made for the professional mount on there and just rigged them up and hung them on the wall and it works perfectly fine. So all it cost me was a couple dollars in the bolts that I had to buy that were the correct length and thread width to actually you know fit in there. But other than that, it was just with kind of scrap stuff I had laying around here and I got them mounted basically in the same spot they're a little bit more narrow uh, on the wall than where my polk ones were because my polk ones were directly in line with my front main speakers these are a little bit more narrow but they have a wide dispersion tweeter on there so it covers you know the the sound area perfectly fine for me so i actually like i said i really enjoy these and to me these are end game level speakers here, and I have no intention of getting rid of these um, unless one of them breaks, you know? And even at that point, I would probably look just to replace, buy a separate to replace the one that would break because these are gonna stay with me you know, for the rest of my time. I, I've even, in the course of finding these and making this video, sold my Polk speakers already. And I actually sold them for more money than I paid for these. So, 
I, I, I'm, I'm happy. I, I can't be happier with them. And the audio quality, like I said, is great on these. And so again, that kind of rounds me back to like end game stuff here in the home theater. These are one of only like a couple items that I have in my mind as being end game level home theater speakers or end, end game level home theater equipment. And I'm extremely happy to have these. And like I said, these are not uh, going anywhere. I'm going to keep them for as long as I have a home theater here in my home. Uh, so that kind of wraps up my stuff here about end game and home theater equipment uh, for right now. Maybe I'll do some videos uh, or something down the road about some of my other items I think are end game level stuff for me here in this home theater. Uh, but I just want to give a, you know, big thank you to everyone who subscribed. Uh, I'm, I think over 30 subscribers now and I have several videos that are like, uh, nearing or over a hundred views or 150 views. And I have, uh, one of my videos, I think it's the no commentary tour video is over or at like 500 views or 600 views or something like that. And that's, again, that's crazy to me. And I really appreciate all the support. I've talked with a couple of, uh, different people out there that have subscribed and commented on my videos. And I, I really appreciate that. Uh, everything, you know, you guys do for my channel helps, you know, with the algorithm and show support that what I'm doing is actually, you know, uh, being viewed and people are enjoying it out there. So, um, uh, Again, thanks for everything and uh, look forward to some more content. I'm trying to, when I have free time, kind of do multiple videos at once so then I can get them uh, put out, you know, uh, sporadically on the channel. So again, thanks for everything and I will see you in the next video.